Hey, how's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And welcome back to another episode of Grail or Garbage, the series where I systematically and categorically rank and review knives like this C. Risner Special Edition Titanium and M390 Penguin. <sighs> it's a mouthful. Is it more than just a penguin with some better materials? Is it a gimmick? Is it just as good as the original $45 penguin? I spent the last couple of weeks asking myself those questions, searching for answers, and I think I have them. Now that I do, the only question left to answer is, is this special edition penguin with better materials a grail? Or is it garbage? All right, everybody, it's time to get down to brass tacks on just how good this QSP Penguin ranks on our leaderboard. And if you haven't seen it, here's our current leaderboard as of right now. As you can see, the number one knife that I have reviewed so far is the Grant Gripper. It is the only one that has reached Grail status. How do you reach Grail status? Well, each knife will be ranked categorically and systematically based on five things materials ergonomics fidget factor the locking mechanism and of course fit and finish so each category is a max possible of 10 points with a total overall possible amount of points of 50. i don't ever expect to see a knife that's worth 50 points on my leaderboard but if it's out there we're gonna find it so let's go ahead and see how this c risner exclusive QSP Penguin ranks up against the competition. So the first category is materials. Materials on here are very good. Now, it's important that I mention that the rankings are weighed against the cost of this knife, and the cost of this knife is somewhere around 120 bucks, which is really, really hard to beat, considering that you have M390 and titanium with the titanium pocket clip, there is no backspacer, but I wish that there was. That really would have finished this off, and I think that you know making this $130, $140 with a titanium backspacer would have just been next level in my opinion. But I'm okay settling for M390 and titanium at this price point, especially considering that normally these materials demand a much higher price point. For those reasons, the materials category is going to come in at a solid 9 out of 10 purely because at this price point, you don't typically get this quality and these materials. So phenomenal job there. The next category is ergonomics. How does it fit in the hand? Is it comfortable to hang on to? Does it make sense? Do I feel like I need to add stuff to it? No, um, actually the ergonomics on here are pretty good. I do have a few small gripes, however. Gripe number one is the thickness of these handle scales there's they're not like paper thin by any stretch but they are thin and on a knife like this I do actually prefer to have a little bit thicker if they had just made this a little bit thicker on each scale it would have been perfect as it stands it does help with the pocket uh, it does help with the pocketability of this knife because it'll it'll slip in your fifth pocket no problem however a knife is only useful when you have it in hand so you know what i did kind of knock off some points for that the other part that i wasn't too terribly thrilled about was the jimping on the back it's not there's nothing wrong with it it could have just been better and i'll see if i can zoom in there uh, i would have liked to have had the jimping go up a bit further i mean shoot they could have made this whole spine jimped and that actually would have been perfect the jimping itself isn't rough it doesn't hurt your fingers it makes sense and you know what that's nice however the other thing that i've noticed is is that you have this hump here and the hump here is kind of indicative of the model but i would like to see in new iterations a cutout right here so that you can actually move your finger up there you can rest it on there right now but it doesn't offer any traction and there's no jimping right there to help keep your finger in place when it is there so it's not necessarily a finger position that i can trust it's not a deal breaker for me by any stretch especially considering that this jigging on the handle scales is gorgeous and not rough on the hands while allowing you to maintain a good grip. So it's not like it's gonna slide out of your hands at all, but if that's where you're gonna rest your finger, I would just like to see some jimping right there, or even better, a cutout. A finger cutout would have been perfect. 
but there's always next year. So yeah, uh, ergonomics on this knife, they're nothing to write home about. They're also not terrible. So for that reason, the ergonomics gets a 7 out of 10. Moving on to my favorite category, fidget factor. Do you want to play with it? Is it comfortable to play with? Can you do it for hours and does it make sense? Is it something that you have to think about? Uh, you know what? This knife is excellent. And I'm going to say excellent because you can only really deploy it with the thumb stud. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you might notice that I'm not a huge thumb stud only kind of guy. There's very few knives that I have that are thumb stud only, and they're not typically the ones that I like to fidget with. However, the action with these ball bearings is great. Now, keep in mind, the original QSP Penguin that's not this exclusive doesn't have ball bearings. It has phosphor bronze washers, and it's also a liner lock instead of a frame lock. So... The detent on here is nice and crispy, meaning that when you go to deploy it, you don't really have to have any wrist action at all. It deploys really easily. Middle finger flick. I mean, it's not even really a flick. You just break the detent and pow, right in the kisser it goes. So that's nice. And then, of course, closing it one-handed is not an issue either. And the detent and the ball bearings makes all the difference, but it's just fun to do. And... Oh, there we go. It's just fun to do, and I really enjoy playing with this knife. It's something that is definitely good, especially for left hand, because it helps you keep in mind where your fingers and your thumbs are. And so if you're trying to build dexterity in your left hand, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm a big fan of that. I think that it feels good, and it's the only thumb stud only knife that I have that just blows me away as far as how fun and friendly it is to fidget with. Uh, I do have to lightly touch on the locking mechanism, even though that's the next category, and that's because the locking mechanism is great. It's part of the detent, and it doesn't get in the way of being able to fidget with this knife. And so for all of those reasons, the fidget factor for the Sea Risner Penguin is a strong 8 out of 10. Yeah. Moving on, we're going to get to the lock. The lock, as I already touched on, is a frame lock. Now, the original QSP Penguin does come with a liner lock, which isn't too bad, to be honest. A lot of people actually do like liner locks because there's nothing getting in the way of that lock bar when you're trying to play with it or deploy it or whatever. Uh, but I do actually prefer a frame lock on a knife that's supposed to be a user, and this one's supposed to be a user because the frame lock is going to be able to hold up to a bit more pressure than a liner lock. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. How is the lockup on here? Well, there's no side-to-side -side play up and down. Uh, there's no uh, pivot lash. And the detent does suck it right in, which is nice. Uh, however, and I will say this, this did not necessarily come with any Loctite on the pivot. A lot of people will actually be a big fan of that because it allows you to put the Loctite on there yourself and really tune it in before it gets locked in. Uh, but after fidgeting with this for about three or four days, I did notice that it got loose, not a huge deal, just tightened it back up, looked at some Loctite and called it good. So keep in mind, if you do manage to get your hands on one of these, you will have to put your own Loctite on it, especially if you, like me, enjoy fidgeting with it. The lock is solid. It's nothing super special as far as knife locks are concerned. You know, frame locks have been around for a coon's age, but I do like it, and it is a very good iteration, especially at this price point. So, for those reasons, the locking mechanism gets a solid 7 out of 10. Woo! Okay, and we're already at the end. I could ramble about this knife for a minute. But guys, we got to talk about the fit and finish. How well realized is the design? Uh, you know, did it come executed well from the factory? Did it come sharp from the factory? You know, is the design fully realized and how does that translate to you using it and carrying it every day? Well, ultimately, I think that this design is very well realized and that's proven by sales. If you look, the QSP Penguin, the original one, the Plain Jane with bronze washers and, and uh, you know, liner lock, uh, that one sold very, very well. People are happy with it and people still love it. So for them to go ahead and add materials and for traditionalpocketknives.com to do an exclusive in Jig Titanium and word on the street is that this is Austin from Traditional Pocket Knives Jigged Pattern. He Apparently he did this pattern. I haven't necessarily confirmed it. 
but I have heard that from multiple sources. So Austin, if you did that, good on you, mate, because that's pretty good. And I'm really enjoying that jig pattern. It almost gives it this 3D effect. I love when it's not just flat titanium handles because not only does it help with the grip, which I already mentioned in the ergonomics section, but it just looks cool. The other thing is, is that I love how this logo is silver. The contrast against the black handle scales in the black blade is beautiful. And it just feels classy and new age without being too out there. I do wish that they had done a backspacer because if you're going to do full titanium with the with the tie clip and the tie scales, you might as well go, go the whole nine and add in a backspacer. I would have paid a couple extra bucks for that, but you know what? It's not a deal breaker by any stretch, and a lot of people do prefer barrel spacers because it makes cleaning the inside of their knives easier. I'm a big fan of maintaining your knives, so I do get it. Uh, you can get aftermarket backspacers, but currently the only ones that I've seen are 3D printed, and I feel so bad putting a 3D printed plastic backspacer on there when the rest of the knife is M390 and titanium, but maybe that's just me being a bit of an elitist right there. So all in all, there's no sharp edges except for the one that's supposed to be sharp. And how sharp is it? Well, I don't have a full sheet of paper, but I do have a piece of scrap paper here, and I'll just demonstrate. That one was my fault. It's very sharp. This flat blade is really, really good for being able to maintain and strop and sharpen. And I haven't felt the need to sharpen this one because it slices really well and that M390 holds an edge. For blades with M390, I really do pr prefer to just strop and only strop unless something damaging happens to that blade because I don't want to take off more than I need to when it comes to maintaining this edge. The blade itself is perfectly designed for utility cuts, whether you're opening back packages, destroying, uh, you know, letters and, you know, evidence, all that good stuff. Anything that you could use a knife for, this is pretty much going to do the trick. It's not a hard use knife, but it's going to take care of about 90% of the tasks that you'd need a knife for anyways. So yeah, fit and finish on here is definitely good. And... I'm a big fan of this knife. This is one that's easy to carry and you don't need an excuse to considering that it does fit in your fifth pocket. So even if there's another knife that you like to carry, this would make a great secondary. And it's also a knife that for just, you know, over the $100 price point is very accessible to people. If you want to experience higher end materials like M390 and titanium, but it's been hard because maybe you're limited on your budget, this is your opportunity to get in there. So yeah, uh, as far as the fit and finish is concerned, I'm going to go ahead and give this a 9 out of 10. I think fit and finish is excellent, and I think other people think that as well because now they're officially sold out on the traditional pocketknives.com website. Don't worry, I have a feeling that these will be back. And who knows, we might get this on the large penguin next. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I think that getting one of the large penguins with this setup would be fantastic. Then you could have a primary and secondary or just carry one or the other. I don't care. Do what you want. Do what makes you happy. But 9 out of 10 for fit and finish, which is going to bring the total overall score, wait for it, to 40. 40. And I know that some of you might be saying, what? How does this outperform a pair of three or, you know, a PM2 or one of those other knives that's that seems way more fancy that has things like backspacers? Guys, it's all about the valuation on here. At, at the price point, the execution of this knife in general is outstanding. Not only do you get great materials, you get great action. You get decent ergonomics. It's fun to fidget with. The lock is more than more than adequate and at the end of the day it was manufactured really well qsp did an amazing job manufacturing this knife so yeah it's going to be at the top of my high recommend list it's just shy of a grail for it to be a grail it would have had to hit each category or one of those categories just a little bit better but if i'm being honest i can't call a qsp penguin a grail i just can't uh, it's extremely high, the high, as high as you can go as far as a high recommend. And you know what? If you like knives and you want something that's more unique, a more high-end version of a budget of a budget knife, this is it. And I can definitely feel good recommending this to people. 
Uh, while this one might be sold out, they do have other versions that have titanium, maybe just not M390, you know, other scale sizes and you know, th there's a lot of different variations of this knife and I'll make sure to list a few down in the description below. Other than that guys, let me know, was I fair in my ranking of the C. Risner traditional pocket knives.com exclusive penguin in titanium and M390 or should it have scored better? Should it have scored lower? I gotta know. Let me know in the comments section down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boo-hoo, there is a button for you too. And if you wanna see more content just like it, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll see you on the flip side.